I've been play testing all day to get this game ready for you guys tomorrow, so I'm super excited to give it a shot. Uh, the game is called Terra Tower, and the backstory for the for the game is that you're time travelers from the world of future world of 2075, and in that time, feudalism is reigning supreme again. A system of knights and nobles and royalty are ruling the world, and the most valuable asset in that world is land, and the most valuable of all land is Aldrich Park. During the cyber wars 25 years earlier in 2050, control of land was taken from the barbarians, but shifted back and forth between warring households who used elaborate hacking protocols to steal the digital rights to various parcels of Aldrich Park. Well, after years of bloodshed, grief, and technological mayhem, the blockchain technology finally emerged as a foolproof mechanism for proving who had rights to which bits of territory, and as a result, land conquest through warfare was abolished. It seemed that peace was finally at hand. However, that did not quench the most warlike royal family's desire for territory. Now, however, because it was locked in the blockchain, the only means of taking it back was to go back in time and to acquire rights to the Genesis block. The only way to do that was to set for the royal households to send subjects back to the very beginning of the blockchain to conquer Aldrich Park. You are those subjects. Subjects. Returning from the future, trying to gain a digital, digital foothold for your royal household. You must claim the territory before your opponents can, while attempting to remain unnoticed by the external population, the natural time-bound population, so that you don't change the trajectory of time and render your existence vanished. Um, so that's the backstory. Some of the mechanics of the game is you can play in groups of two or three. Terra Tower is basically a physical variant of a territory capture game that was more or less inspired by uh, tower defense games. Uh, we're going to play it during the final exam slot on Tuesday, June 9th, which is either tomorrow or today by the time you're watching this video, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And attendance is required for everyone in the class. Make sure when you come, you wear comfortable shoes, you have a fully charged phone with the software installed, you wear sunscreen and a hat and or a hat, and you bring water. Um, it's supposed to be pretty hot. We're going to be running around Aldrich Park a little bit. Now, the goal of the game is to capture as much of the territory as possible. And the area, of the, um, uh, the area that we're playing in is going to be a rectangle located in um, Aldrich Park. This area is going to be um, played in a rectangle aligned north, south, east, and west. There's going to be approximately 50 squares in the east-west direction and approximately, uh, I'm sorry, 75 squares in the east-west direction, 75 parcels in the east-west direction, and 150 in the north-south uh, area of the game. Each game is designed to last 50 minutes, and we're going to play two rounds during our final exam slot. In both rounds, it's basically a free-for-all. You can try and do anything short of making physical contacts with the other teams in order to get an advantage. So you might want to consider bringing bikes. You might want to consider bringing Wi-Fi hotspots if you've got them, and possibly multiple client devices if you want to play with multiple devices. Now, the basic action of the game is the placement of a tower in Aldrich Park. Players' teams may place one tower every five minutes, and every 30 seconds of game time that that tower survives, it claims territory with an increasing radius for every 30 seconds after that tower is placed. Players can also place a bomb once every two and a half minutes. A bomb has a two and a half minute fuse that has to burn before it's gonna blow up. A bomb that blows up destroys any towers that were in the vicinity of that bomb in the bomb blast, it also destroys all claim to the land that's within the bomb blast, but it doesn't blow up any other bombs that are placed in that area. You can place a bomb once, um, sorry, um, when the territory of two towers meet. So if you place two towers and their territory grows over time, when the territory meets, it forms a boundary and both of those territories stop growing at that point 
as long as the towers that are behind them remain there in order to support the tar territory that's grown. If at any time one of those towers is destroyed, the other tower will begin to encroach on the territory that was owned by the tower and can't be defended anymore by the strength of having the tower there. Located in the park are 10 codes. These codes are on pieces of paper and they can be entered to increase the rate of tower placement, to increase the rate of bomb placement, or to decrease the bomb fuse time. Each code does one of those things and it's described on the paper that has the code. And each code is a 10 digit alphanumeric case sensitive string. Um, in your client device, which you're running on your mobile phone, you hold it up and move it around in order to view the territory that's around you. And what you can see is you can see any towers that you have placed, but you can't see your opponent's towers. You can, however, see which territory has been colored uh, by different teams. Each team has its own color. So you can see where the, who owns what land and roughly how much. You can see your towers and you can see all bombs. Um, if you want to figure out where your opponent's towers are, you have to infer the location of the tower by looking to see the spread of the land as the game goes on. Aldrich Park doesn't have very strong Wi-Fi in the center, and so this game is built with the understanding that you might not always have connection. There's better Wi-Fi on the edges. So in order for to towers to be placed and bombs to be placed, you have to take your client into the park, into the location where you want to place the bomb, you capture the, that location as a place where you want to place a tower or drop a bomb, and then you have to leave the park or get, get to an area that has Wi-Fi coverage, and once you have Wi-Fi coverage, then you upload the tower or you upload the bomb to the location that you previously tagged. When you upload it, at that moment, it takes effect. So the bomb starts burning or the tower starts growing um, territory. Okay, um, great. So in terms of the software mechanics, the APK is available from our class website. It's also available in the Google Play Store. Make sure that you're using version 1.5. That's the version that's been updated for this year. It's been debugged and made a little smoother. The process of running the software involves, um, you can run it without the server being run, but it involves a server on the back end, and the server has to be started. And the first thing that has to be done is you have to calibrate your client. So we'll all calibrate our clients together uh, when it comes time. Um, during the game, your view of the game world doesn't refresh. You have to manually refresh it by hitting a fetch status bus button. That manual refreshing takes about 15 seconds. So please don't hit it more than once every 15 seconds because that's just going to queue up a uh, request to the server to get a refreshed game board. Remember, the game board only changes once every 30 seconds anyway, so hitting it any more often than that doesn't help. When the game refreshes, the view in your client is going to glitch a little bit as the game board redraws, and then it'll catch up, and you'll see that it has uh, redrawn with fresh information on it. Okay, any information that the server needs to tell you will be shown in a status bar at the top of your client. And the way that you're going to be graded is going to be based on your gameplay. So gameplay consists of the rubric that we're going to, we're going to use is that 30% of your grade is going to come from showing up for both games. 10% um, is going to come from placing a tower in game one. 10% is going to come from placing a bomb in game one. 10% is going to come from placing a tower in game two. 10% is going to come from placing a bomb in game two. 10% is going to be given to you if your team is able to find and use a code in either game. 5% of your score will come from having the most territory at the end of game one, another 5% for having the most territory at the end of game two, and then 5% will come from owning the most territory over the span of the entire game, not just at the end point for both of those games. And then for whatever scores people get, we'll, we'll curve it. Um, in case there's really huge discrepancies. Um, great, so that's the foundation of the game. Tomorrow we're gonna meet. Uh, if you can meet uh, as soon as possible before four o'clock, we wanna get started right at four o'clock. Meet um, here on the map where it says meet here by the star. There's a, there's a power outlet there and a um, counter where I can do the game mastering from. Bring your clients, 
we will um, calibrate them and then we'll say go and we'll play two games 50 minutes each. Okay, if you have any questions, put the questions up on Piazza. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Should be fun. Worked hard on getting it ready for you guys, so I hope it plays well.